Hello and welcome back to Penelope the Geek. You join us for another video uh, of a war transformed and uh, also doing an unboxing of the Great War British Infantry. Uh, this is a relatively new box. I think it only came out last week or week before. Um, got my hands on one for a war transformed. Uh, so we're going to have a look at these models first. Uh, I'm going to build two sections. It's going to be a little bit like the German video I did. We're going to build a 10 point uh, army uh, and the first, well the core of it is going to be these line troops uh, which are made out of the, the British infantry here and um, that's going to be four of the ten points into two sections of these. Uh, that will be eight models per section so let's have a look at the North Atlantic models. Uh, I did quite like the German ones, I do like quite like some of the models. Um, obviously one of the downsides is they don't come with bases but it's not a massive downside. I'll be getting my book bases that I'm going to be using from uh, War Bases UK. Uh, they're just going to be these ones that I used in the last video. Uh, and I'll be using some cavalry bases, which are not exactly the right size for the game, but I think they look better. So I'll be going with the rule of uh, I'm going to use what I like. Uh, <laughs> so let's look at one of these sprues anyway. Um, we have five bodies on one of these sprues, there are six sprues in here, so that's 30 models. Uh, the German soldiers had um, six models and five sprues, so yeah. Uh, there's five bodies on this one, so maybe there's a few more bits on these sprues. I'm a whole extra sprue in here. Um, let's have a look. We have helmets there. That's the Brody helmet, if that's what it's called. Don't quote me, I'm no expert on World War One at all. And then we have the older style helmets there. And um, so we've got some MacGuffin that can go on the belts. We have a club, good for trench warfare. A bucket. Uh, is that a bucket? Or is that something else? It's hard to tell what that is. It looks like some sort of bucket. And then we have a, what looks like a Lewis gun. Plenty of rifles along here. Uh, we have various arms, there is a revolver which is great, we have that there and uh, we have uh, gas masks, uh, these gas masks are awesome actually, I really like these. I always think gas masks just really make a model creepy. Um, it was one of the things that originally drew me to making Space Marine and Nurgle Army uh, was like the fact they all have these like gas masky type helmets. But I think these ones look particularly creepy the way they sort of pinch the face. It looks really weird and you just see his eyes and no mouth and then just this weird, almost like some monster with a feeder tentacle. I think those things look really weird. Um, I won't be going for an all gas mask army this time. My English uh, British army is going to be following a slightly different course. Um, I think I'm going to be taking Arthurian legend as sort of inspiration. Um, some guys come out of the forest, some sort of druid looking wizardy guy, calls himself Merlin, has picked this officer, uh, not to say his name yet, and has said, you are going to be the rightful king of England, and then, so whether this is a charlatan or really the real Merlin, well, you know, that's up to anyone who's listening to decide, but ultimately that's what uh, the captain's going to believe, and what the wizard, witch, whichever one it is, because I might do the same thing again, I might have a captain in this with a witch, and I might do base that on the Lady of the Lake, and then I might make a separate mesmerist, so I can switch the captain around and then use like a wizard as a, like the Merlin character as a mesmerist, that's kind of what I'm thinking about, some cavalry options, um, so we'll, we'll, you should see, you'll see some of them in a minute, uh, as soon as we've put the uh, infantry sections together. But we also have some caps at the bottom. I've digressed, obviously. And these are covered helmets there. Then we have lots of packs there. And then we have the packs that go over the uh, shoulders and hang on the stomach sort of area, sort of chest area. Uh, we have those there. So there's some cool options on here, actually. Uh, yeah, this should do very nicely. So let me... Uh, cut some of these guys off the sprues and get started. Okay, so we'll look at some of the built models so far. That's an NCO for one of the sections. 
Uh, left the packs off him just to so he looks different basically and I know which one's the unit leader um, I've added on the backpack and the front pack on most of the others they seem to have turned out quite well to be honest uh, they feel a bit more detailed in areas than the German ones I think maybe because it's a newer kit um, but they do look really nice. They just they do remind me of the um, bolt action British Expeditionary Force models that I've got um, for World War Two. In a lot of ways, I think the kit's very similar. Um, so that's the models off of one sprue. I need to build some more. I'm going to add on some non-standard equipment because this is a fantasy game. So I'm going to be adding on some non-standard axes and little daggers and such like and whatever other griblies and stuff I want to add on to. I'm not going to make them too too fantastical. I'm going to save that for some, maybe some of the elite units. Um, so for now uh, I'll continue putting these together so I've got two full sections and then I'll be back. Okay so we've completed our two sections. Uh, we have an NCO or a leader, it's fine, if you don't upgrade him, he doesn't look that different to normal guys, but he just doesn't have the pack on, same on this side, just so I can tell a little bit of different, and I'll probably paint them slightly different, maybe some markings on the helmet, show them as a leader, no that wouldn't be historically correct, but this isn't a historical game, so I also made a automatic rifle from the Lewis gun, so there is a team there that can replace two of the guys from one of these. And while I was doing it, I thought, why not have a go at uh, making an option instead of taking an automatic rifle. So I cut the bayonet off and used one of the German hand grenades and turned them into grenadiers. Um, so that's a two-man team as well in the book. And I think the, I think the three upgrade points, same as that. So if I fancy trying something a bit different from a machine gun, I can switch them around. And just see how they perform before I make any more out. I've got 10 guys left from the box set. They, this, that rounds up to 20. And while I was doing that, I thought I'd do the same with the Germans. So I made them a couple of pioneers. So you're with the German army with the uh, obligatory gas masks. Um, there we go. Just some STL gas masks that I've printed. Exactly the same as the, the plastic ones because they're from War Games Atlantic. Speaking of which, we're going to move on to the next unit, which is an elite unit, which is the Lancers. So we've got four uh, line points, so we're now going to have four elite points, bringing the army total up to, to eight. Uh, for that, we're going to use these, if you might have seen them off of the camera there. So these are horses from War Games Atlantic. These are the Polish uh, Lancers set, the World War II one. But I didn't think they looked that bad for using in World War One. to be fair. It's basically just a war horse with some... MacGuffin on it, the packs and some a bedroll or whatever that is. So there's four of those in a unit. So uh, let me put all that up. Uh, uh, so we have four of those. These are the bases that I'm using. The 60 by 30. They're not the ones that as I've, you have to use in the book. But as I said, I'm going to be measuring everything from the center of the base. So. I'm certainly not going to be measuring from the edges, and I think they just look better on a normal base rather than on a big round base. Uh, I like these, so I'm going to be using these. Uh, there's enough meat on there to balance that once the riders on. So I do have some printed off Polish riders. Here we go. That's what they look like, and they're pretty good. I was going to use them um, and just paint them in British colours. I mean, again, at 28 mil, you can barely tell the difference. There might be some equipment differences, uh, but that's basically it. Um, but I want to go for a more Arthurian-esque theme with this. So I found myself some knights on um, my mini factory. So we've got some knightly legs and knightly bodies. On that we also have in the box of tricks some actual lances and we also have some shields 
There we go. Still got some of the crap on it I need to take off. But various shield styles. So I'm going to build a, basically a knight's body. There should be a shield arm in there too somewhere. And then put, put the shield on. I'm actually going to give them the Brody helmets because I don't want them to look completely like knights because that would be a bit too much I think. Uh, so we're going to have the World War horses, World War Brody helmets still. Knightly bodies. Basically, they basically raided a museum and grabbed a bunch of stuff and decided that they can't see through the helmets so they're just going to keep the normal helmets. Uh, they're not completely stupid. <laughs> so they're going to just just a bit fanatical towards uh, uh, their leader. Uh, and there goes on the box, the bits box, so I'm not going to pick it up. So I'll be back in a minute. So now I've retrieved all the bits off the floor, which was a pain. Um, we've got our horses there on the bases. You'll notice there's five, not four. That's because we're doing our captain at the same time, who's also going to be mounted. I'm also going to give this little banner to the unit, just for fanciness. It doesn't do anything in the game. I just like it. Uh, so we're going to have our lances though. And we're going to have our arms. Captain's going to get an axe. <clears throat> That's because I intend on giving him a upgrade in the next, when we move, when we move up to the next point level. Uh, and it'll be one of the branches, so I can just say that the, the actual axe is made from it as well. And then they just put an axe head onto it. That's what I'm going to do, rather than him running around with a stick. Um, so let me put these together. It's a simple case of putting these onto there. They should fit because as these were being cured, I actually put them onto the horses. So hopefully they haven't adjusted themselves in, in, the, in the meantime and they will go on quite well. We have our separate bodies, various designs. So the, uh, <coughs> sorry, the knights are knights of virtue. From monstrous encounters uh, that can be found on my mini factory and obviously these are Atlantic war games horses so let me stick these together stick some heads on them as well and I'll be back to show you that unit okay so we have ourselves some lancers um, with a shiny shiny really useless probably just reproduction armor not even real probably armor it's probably just been reproduced from a museum Gives them no extra protection whatsoever. Just makes them a big shiny target on the battlefield. But you know, they'll be protected because this guy is the future king. Or at least that's what, you know, the wizard tells him. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so that's uh, four points of lancers. We also have a free captain done. Uh, we have two points of line, another two points of line. Uh, we have two points left in our ten point army. We're going to use spend that on cannonade. That's where there's a big base here. And we're going to make ourselves a mortar, a trench mortar. So again, I've three printed um, this. So no need to look at it. That's the first thing. So we have ourselves a nice little mortar there. Now this mortar is from a set uh, called. Um, Gloom Trench, I think, 1926. A little bit ahead of the, the era that we're looking at, but doesn't really matter. Uh, not for this case. I actually did print off the bodies from that set as well, if I can ever find them. We have duh, 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 these two, and I'm sure there's another one. I might have lost it when I threw the box on the floor. Uh, just have a quick look at these bodies. They're quite bulky compared to our other bodies. However, I don't think they're overly different. Um, I was going to use some of these. So these are the Bulldogs uh, bodies. This is an STL gown from Wargames Atlantic. This one isn't. This is from uh, Gloom Trench. Uh, again, on my mini factory. Um, I think I'm going to use these. The only reason I wasn't going to use these is because they're quite bulky, like now that I'm not a big fan of the heads that come with these. So again, I'll do a head swap like I've done with the cavalry. Um, but I am liking them now that I've, more that now that I've printed them off. I kind of wish I'd printed the heads off as well, because I might have liked them more after we'd printed off. But I want to keep sort of a theme in the army, so at least give them the same sort of helmets, so they don't look completely alien. So I'm going to see if I can find this third guy. 
and then I'll be back. So, having a look at this, uh, yeah, we now have a little brown dot. So, I was planning on making a little embankment for these guys, now that I've found the, uh, the third man. There he was, he was underneath my chair, of all places. Uh, I was going to make it a bit like the German gun emplacement I built because it's a similar sort of thing. It won't fit on. Once they're all on there, they take up most of this 60mm base. I could get a 75mm base. Uh, I do have some on order and it should be on the way. I'm too impatient to wait. Plus, I'm going to save them for like field guns and bigger crews. So I've just built this little embankment. It's still drying. Uh, we're just going to have these guys on here. I'm going to green stuff the necks, much like I have done with these. And then we will come back and have a look at the force. Okay, so here's our placement drying away there. Ooh, don't want to put too many fingerprints on that. But there we go. So that's our trench mortar. So the last thing we need to add into this force is a witch. So, <clears throat> much like with the German force, I intend to maybe make this Merlin character a mesmer. And possibly then the captain would be a lieutenant. Or run him as a captain and then have another witch. So we're going to make a Merlin's apprentice um, for this army. Who's going to be a female called Morgan. And we're going to use the female Frostgrave wizard sprue. Uh, we're going to take some parts off that. Try and find a few parts off the British sprue that's going to look okay on that. I'll have a quick look around. I can't think of anything else I want to add on at the moment. There's quite a lot of things on this sprue. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back with a witch. Okay, so there's our witch. Didn't go too crazy because it was quite busy the body that I picked. It's got satchels and everything already. I didn't want it to have a gas mask on like the gym one. <laughs> Uh, I thought about putting the helmet on, but I actually just put it so that there was some straps on her back. So I just put a helmet on her back, cut off the rest of the head. So she does have a helmet on there. Put her on a little, a little stabby knife. I just gave her a book in her hand and a little familiar. Most of the parts are just off the frost grave uh, sprue. There's quite a lot of nice things on there, and there's got a lot of options. Um, so there we go. Pretty simple. She's just an apprentice. She will do for now though. And that is the witch. So we have captain, for now, witch. We have ourselves two line units, we have ourselves an elite unit, and we have ourselves a cannonade. Uh, just to reiterate, two points of line, two points of line. That allows us to take up to four points of elites. We have four points of elites. That would allow us to take up to two points of cannonade, and we have two points of cannonade. So that is a ten point army. We have upgrades in there as well, so without working off the 50% rule, uh, as I'll be making the armies, I'll just go for 50%. Uh, and in this case, we have an NCO for one point, an NCO for another one point in two squads. And then we have our automatic rifle for three points, coming up to the five points. So an extra leftover for our captain or witch or anything. That is our 10 point army, which we're going to play our first game with against the German 10 point army that we saw in the previous video. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll do a painting video on these, if you want to see it put it in the comments you want to see it. There has been a lot of interest in doing the painting video for the Germans, so again put in the comments if you want to see it for these guys. Uh, I might play again before they're painted because it will take me a while to paint them, I need to get a lot of free time to paint them. So I may either play before they're painted or during the painting or if I can get them done really quickly after the painted, but it will be a little while uh, until there's a, a battle report video going up. I would very much like to do one. Even if it's just a test video, just to, rather than just a, a full game, just to go through a few couple of turns, uh, just go through the rules and see how they feel um, and get used to them, I think. I think that's what I need to do. So I might record that and it'll be a bit of a haphazard video if I do that or I might wait until I've done that and then do it I've got to do it uh, please like and subscribe and tell your friends and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon thanks for watching and goodbye for now